Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones. And we are the Provident Preppers. As we speak, a major winter storm is hitting the northeast portion of our country, bringing with it high winds and snow and wind chills that are extremely dangerous. Are you prepared to travel in a severe winter storm if you are forced to? The best option is not to travel at all if you can help it, but if you must travel, let's talk about some pointers that will help you do it safely. Let's talk about severe winter storms and the things that we can do to stay safe. Google the Provident Prepper Severe Winter Storm Tips to keep you safe for lots and lots of good information. The very best way to stay safe on the road is not to be on the road in the first place. If there is any way that you can avoid travel during a winter storm, that is your very best option. We want you to hunker down at home and be safe. And so much of this involves our preparedness. If we are prepared, there's a lot of storms that we can just ride out from home. Very, very important is to prepare our vehicles. If our vehicles can handle the storm, we have a much greater chance of getting where we need to go safely. This includes tires, very, very important, and making sure our batteries are in good working order and in general our vehicles are well maintained. We always preach keeping your gas tank at least halfway full. That will allow you to get out of harm's way or if you get stranded you've got the fuel that you need to keep yourself warm if you're on the side of the road or wherever you can uh, maintain some, some heat in your car. Planning ahead is really important. Make sure that you map out your route and know exactly where you're going, how you're going to get there, and what your alternative routes are. Road conditions provide you with important information. 511 is one resource that you can use to get information about road closures, about weather, all these kinds of things that will affect your travel. So stay on top of that. Make sure that you are getting current updates so that you don't get yourself into a situation if the storm's changed. We also recommend the All Hazards NOAA Weather Radio. If you've got that resource, that provides also a lot of up-to-date information on storms. It's always best to travel in the daytime. It's harder to see at night, but the dangers increase. The temperature gets colder, so you've got more issues with ice. But the other thing is that dark brings with it a lot of more challenging elements. If you have an accident in the light, there's a lot of eyes to see that it's happened and you're able to get help quicker. So make sure that if at all possible in a winter storm you're traveling in the daytime. And also travel together. If there's two or three cars going to the same place, travel together and that way you have uh, the resources of each other to help if there is a problem. And get a buddy in your own car. If you have a traveling companion, it just makes the trip much easier and much safer. Warm drinks, one of my favorites. If you've got something warm to help warm you from the inside, especially if you had any kind of problem, this is a great way to go. So before you start your trip, take a, a thermos or two, a good quality thermos, because the quality thermoses can maintain that temperature for a good 24 hours. That gives you a long time to have your hot coffee or chocolate or tea or some nice hot soup. Anything that can help warm you from the inside out. I think it goes without saying that having a charged cell phone would be very, very important. And having the ability to charge that cell phone in the event that your trip is extended and that phone uh, runs down, having a power bank or the ability to charge from your car would be very important. Before you left, you should have told somebody where you're going, your planned routes, and when you plan to be there. It's very important that you have the communication tools to notify that person and give them updates so that you're safe. If something happens, that will significantly decrease the time that it takes for you to be found and rescued. So we like to do our vehicle emergency kit in two separate kits. This is actually how it looks in the back of our Suburban. We have this really sturdy plastic tote, and of course the blankets don't fit well, so they're just stacked on the side. When you open the tote, you will find that there are two separate kits. The personal emergency kit provides those things that are needed for you and the occupants of your car. Now, if you're taking a long trip in the winter, you'll probably want to add some things to this or add some additional backpacks. We have these in backpacks 
so that they are mobile. If you do have to leave, you have the ability to carry these things with you. This includes things like blankets or sleeping bags that you can use to keep you warm. Warm coats and boots, warm clothing, gloves, mittens, hats, socks, all these things that will help you stay warm. High energy snacks like protein bars or granola bars or trail mix, things that will provide your body with the energy that it needs to keep you warm. Bottled water is critical. You will stay much warmer if you are hydrated because your blood will be thinner and circulate more freely and that will help to keep you warm and reduce the risk of hy hypothermia. It, yeah. If I was leaving and I was gonna travel in a severe winter storm, I would put a case or two of bottled water in here. I would just slide it right in next to the blankets. Making sure that you have light, uh, extra batteries and flashlights. It's really important that you have the resources to be seen. If something happens and you're stranded, you not only want to see if it's dark, but you want people to be able to see you so that you're safe and so that you can be found. Obviously, you want a good first aid kit. You should have this with you all the time, but especially in a storm. Having some heat sources is also important. Things like a candle, they have some 115 hour candles that you could put in a cup holder and although it doesn't provide a lot of light or a lot of heat, it provides some that might help keep you warm. Things like hand and foot warmers would be really nice to have and would go a long way to help you stay warm. Having a multi-tool knife or a knife and other tools that you might need. These things would help you to take care of a variety of situations. Personal sanitation items, having an emergency stove for melting snow, uh, for drinking water or to heat up food or just to provide some warmth, and then having some games or books or music, things that will help you pass the time. You may spend some time, maybe considerable time, in your car and having those things would help and also a whistle that would help you to alert rescuers or others. Yeah, and think about this. It is possible during severe winter storm that the freeway will be shut down and that you could spend hours stranded on the freeway with hundreds of other people because of an accident or something that you happen to fall right behind. Obviously, this provides the things that you need for your vehicle. Things like jumper cables or a jump pack that you could use. Obviously, if you use a jump pack, you need to make sure that is charged. Uh, sand or kitty litter that will help you get out of a, a bind for traction. Uh, they make small shovels that you could use that fit neatly in your car. Uh, having an emergency toolkit, just some basic tools to help you fix things. A tow rope or a tow chain to help you pull yourself or somebody else uh, to safety. An emergency collapsible gas can would be important to be able to get gas for your car. Having road maps. We seem to rely a lot on Siri, but if Siri wasn't available, having maps would be important. Tire chains. Fix a flat. This might be a really great solution if you have a flat tire that can just be fixed by fix a flat rather than you being out in the weather and in danger trying to change a tire. And some emergency flares so that you can be seen by others. Now when you look at this vehicle emergency kit on the screen, this is not a winter prep one. If you notice, we talked about a whole lot of other things like the sand or kitty litter and the shovel, things that will actually help you get out of a bad situation in the snow. This is our regular vehicle emergency kit that, that we just let travel in our car all the time. But if you are venturing out in a severe winter storm, you need to take extra precautions to make sure that you arrive home safely. Now there are some dangers of exposure. Cold is a very dangerous thing. There's issues with hypothermia where your core temperature reduces. The, the dangerous thing about hypothermia is that your brain starts to not think correctly. So once hypothermia sets in, it's very difficult for you to get yourself out of it. So we wanna make sure that you do things right away in the beginning that will keep you warm and prevent hypothermia from occurring. The other thing is pictured here is frostbite. We want to make sure that you keep your circulation going. Even if you're stranded in the car, move your arms and legs and kind of clap your hands or do whatever you need to do to just kind of keep your blood moving and circulating through because that will be helpful. Make sure that none of your skin is exposed to the weather. So if the worst thing happens, we're prepared, right? So if you get stranded in, in the cold, there's a few tips that would really help you to endure that. 
One of those is stay with your car, if at all possible. Because it's the best shelter you're going to have. Turn on your flashers. If your phone is working, call for help. You also can tie some kind of a bright colored flag to your antenna just to signal somebody or to make yourself more visible so that you can be rescued. You may also want, if it's not snowing, you may also want to put your hood up. It's just a good indicator that you're having some problems for somebody that's driving by. I have a coworker who shared with me a very tragic story. On the way home from work one day, he, he commuted a long distance over a mountain pass. And on the way home from work, he passed a car that was stuck in the snow with a few men. And these guys were working on trying to get it out. So he stopped to help them. And they assured him that they were okay and that they didn't need his help. So he went ahead and went home. And the next morning he learned that those men that he had passed had frozen to death. It is a tragic situation. Be very careful that you do not underestimate the power of mother nature and the danger that comes with this really cold weather because it can be tragic in just a very short period of time. If at all possible, don't travel in the severe weather. If you can't avoid it, make sure that you are prepared, that your car is working, that you have the supplies and the resources that you need and the understanding of how to stay warm or keep from freezing should you be stranded. Here are some great resources that we hope you will look at. Google the Provident Prepper Severe Winter Storm Tips to Keep You Safe. That's what this video is based on so you'll find more information on that post. And also the Provident Prepper Preparing to Enjoy the Winter Storm from the Safety of Your Home. Again if possible you're going to stay home and just enjoy watching the storm out the window. And we have some great ideas in there to make sure your home is ready for you to do that. We hope that you won't be required to travel in a severe snowstorm. But if you do, remember the tips that you have learned today. They may help you get home safely. And now for the question of the day. Have you ever been stranded in a snowstorm? If so, what have you learned that can bless the lives of others? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.